is it really a truck? That's the question I get most. Is it really a truck? Well, not to get too controversial, but isn't it technically an SUV? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Tesla Geek Show. I am Anwar Beck. And I'm Eli. And on this week's episode of the Tesla Geek Show, we are going to be having on very special guest and friend of the show, Will from F the Pump. In addition, we're going to talk about Tesla's new charging community and Anwar Beck's up and coming Cybertruck Rodeo. Dude. I know we have some really, really big news from the Adventures of Starman world. Do you want to give us an update on what's going on? Sure, man. So just a few days ago, I launched the Kickstarter for the sixth installment of the Adventures of Starman. It's titled Shadows Over Mars. It is this incredible adventure of Starman and Lucy going from an adventure they were having in the middle of the Arizona desert to getting called up to the moon base to getting launched from a rail gun at the Red Planet to go deal with an evolving crisis. Uh, it's a really fun story. And in fact, we made this really awesome trailer uh, to promote the series and the brand. Take a look. Imagine a world where Starman is the defender of peace. His name is Starman, but don't worry, he's not human. Really? Not human? I'm still more man than machine. Just when the world needed a hero. You convince people that this is a fight that can be won. We found Starman. Blast off into an alternate reality where adventure reigns supreme and witness the legend of Starman unfold. Embrace the unknown. The Adventures of Starman. Available now. Dude, that is incredible. Thank I cannot man. believe how far you've taken this. Like, I think the first time we met is kind of when you had started the first edition of Starman. And I could be watching, I could be taking my kid to the movies. I could be talking to Stan Lee in the making, you know, like a Marvel Starman comic movie one day. That is so incredible, dude. We're building out an entire Starman universe. We've now, you know, we've just launched the Kickstarter for the sixth episode. Uh, we've got a digital card game that allows people to unlock 42 more cutscenes for the story. Uh, we've got a platformer in the works. The first kids book is being started right now uh, for the ages of four to eight range. So that you have something you can read to your kid. It's a really fun uh, space story focusing on Soda Cat. And we have so many more surprises in store for everybody this year. Uh, it's an honor to make this series, man. And it's so much fun. Dude, the lives you touch with this project, especially the little lives, I've seen you interact with little kids and the excitement, you know, especially the the nerdy kids like us that love space, that love Tesla. Like, I think it's so incredible that they get to kind of like dream about, you know, this universe and Starman being the hero. So, yeah, that's so amazing what you're doing. I, this project, I think, is just touching so many lives. Thanks, man. And that's really the goal is that if we're going to ever get to Mars and make humanity a space faring civilization, we've got to get kids excited about space and being interested in study. We've got to get kids caring more about going to the moon than becoming a YouTuber. Like you've seen these stories, right? The number one job for kids these days is to become a YouTuber. Yeah. How much more fun would it be to be an astronaut or work on the space program or do like our friend Austin Bernard does and work on the heat tiles and the starship engines? Like there's so many cool things out there but people have to be presented to them. They need to be shown the stories about it. They have to have a reason to care. And Starman is this new hero that is just the perfect figure to get people excited about where we're going. Yeah, um, totally. But Yeah, no, thank you, man. But speaking of things that are exciting, you have an exciting event coming up with Tesla Owners Club Austin uh, just in two weeks. I think it's going to happen on June 2nd. Yeah. Uh, tell us about it. Tell us about the, oh. uh, the Cybertruck Rodeo. Go ahead and mark your calendars. June 2nd, it's a Sunday. The event's going to be from 10 a.m. until 5. My friend uh, owns this racetrack. I mean, this is just like a good, you know, happenstance. He reached out, is like, bring all the cyber trucks out to my racetrack. So this racetrack is called Domo. It's actually the land that the racetrack is sitting on. It's 400 acres. It's, it's uh, adjacent to uh, the SpaceX facility at McGregor where they test their engines. So it's about an hour and 15 minute drive north uh, from uh, outside of Austin. But uh, June 2nd, we're going to be gathering um, what I'm hoping is going to be the largest gathering of Cybertrucks. We're aiming to get over 100 Cybertrucks out there. 
Um, I think it might be cool to do a rally from the Temple Supercharger because that's one of the, I think, the largest uh, superchargers about 15, 20 minutes away in Temple, Texas from the track. So in the morning, I'm hoping a bunch of people will, will get to the supercharger, charge up, charge up a little bit and do a massive cyber rally from the Temple Supercharger to the Domo racetrack. So you'll actually get to take your cyber truck out on this dirt track and test it out. Um, a lot of, you know, footage and stuff. We're going to attempt the largest uh, light show, including Cybertrucks and the other Teslas there. And it's definitely going to be a family kid friendly event. We're going to have small kid quad cars and then the mini cyber trucks that the kids can have a little course of their own. So June 2nd, massive cyber truck event. Please sign up on the link below. That way you guys can uh, get registered, especially if you're a cyber truck owner. I want to I want to count and take a tally of all the cyber trucks that are coming out. But all are welcome. It's not just for Tesla owners or cyber truck owners. Everybody that's interested in the cyber truck and Tesla or you just want to come and mingle. Everyone's welcome. If you have a cyber truck, if you want to see a cyber truck, if you have a Tesla, are a Tesla owner, not a Tesla owner, we'll have a link posted down below here on X and it will be on the description in YouTube. This is going to be a must attend event. Um, I am, I'm, I have so much FOMO already that I'm not going to be able to join. <laughs> uh, before this event got announced, um, our friend Will actually from F the Pump and Marty at Tesla Club SoCal, uh, they secured us a spot for Long Beach Electrify Expo. So we're going to be having a booth there. But man, if that wasn't already happening, I would be there 100%. I don't have a cyber truck, um, and I would be there just to see this. I mean, I would come without my car. I was just going to fly out to Austin for it. Like it's going to be that kind of party. So, oh yeah, for if sure. You're, if you're in the area, you've got a cyber truck. You have to go out to this event. This is going to be the first big cyber rally like no other. Well, without further ado, let's bring our guests back to the stage. Will, welcome back to the Tesla Geek Show. Yeah, the bump, baby. How you guys doing? Doing good, man. I feel like I haven't seen you in like, I don't know, five minutes. That's <laughs> exactly. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> but so, hey, you love being here. Love having you here, man. So yeah. uh, you broke the internet with something pretty controversial uh, a while back. And it's probably not going to be what most people are expecting. It was with this photo right here of your driveway. <laughs> This is your F-150 Lightning and your Cybertruck. Correct. I don't know. Makes pretty seems pretty sensible to me. You're full, <laughs> you guys are a full EV family, and you got the Ford Lightning a number of years ago, and now you have the Cybertruck. But apparently this was really controversial. Can you tell us about that and kind of what the response you got to this? Yeah, I you know, I thought being, you know, being the EV community we are, we embrace EVs. We don't really care the brand, right? It's just it's we are against the ICE vehicles, not against EVs. But <clears throat> there was a lot of people. That were like Ford owners. Why are you buying that ugly Cybertruck? And a lot of Cybertruck owners, why would you have that Ford thing? You want to have, you know, FSD. You want to have all this other stuff. You got to have a Tesla. And I'm like, I have both. I have like the best of both worlds. But yeah, the the hate that came along with it was a little unexpected. So um, you know, you get you get, you get a little of that Ford Chevy. You know, the '70s uh, hate is kind of now the Ford Tesla hate and. Um, you know, everyone's in competition with each other to sell their their vehicles. I totally understand. And everyone really likes their vehicles. Um, but, you know, there's always that Tesla cult they say is out there. Well, there's a Ford cult out there, too. It's just as bad as Tesla cult. So, um, yeah, I got a little uh, it was a little controversial. What's going on when the, the comments I got for this thing? This almost reminds me of the political climate and heat in the United States. There's no middle ground. You're either super left or super right. I don't know which is which, but to me, Cybertruck is the Democrats, right? California. <laughs> and then the lightning is kind of like the everyday worker vehicle. So it's kind of like this. There is no, it's one or the other. You can't, you can't pick both. So I could totally see people, you know, talking trash on both, both sides of the aisle, I guess. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, talking about the colors, right? Red red for conservative, blue for Democrat. And I, my trucks are kind of the opposite of what you're talking about there. But, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's kind of weird because like this test is built in Austin, right? So you would think it'd be Texas. So Texas is more conservative. So you would think that the Cybertruck more conservative. But, um, yeah, you know, we, we get a lot of uh, people. The engagement on the Cybertruck is just off the charts. It is crazy. You can't drive down the street. You can't park anywhere. You can't even put in my own driveway without people stopping and taking a look. I look out the side. I got the Rivian. I'm the uh, Amazon guy taking pictures of it. I go on my security camera, two, three in the morning. Someone who just happened to be driving down the street stops and take a picture of it. So I think it's almost kind of crossing the aisle, as you say. Um, it's a little bipartisanship uh, uh, vehicle because everyone either likes it or hates it. 
but we're getting a lot more likes than hates nowadays. Uh, I get a lot more of the, it's better looking in person than it was, or it's bigger in person, which is, which is always a big thing, especially in the truck world. You want bigger, bad or best. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the, the hate kind of comes from, is it really a truck? That's the question I get most. Is it really a truck? And you have to kind of drop the tonneau cover or lift the tonneau cover so you can show that, hey, it actually does have a bed in there. Well, not to get too controversial, but by the design of the vehicle and the body's chassis, isn't it technically an SUV? It's got a bed, man. It's got a six foot bed. I guess. Yeah, but the, but the bed doesn't like right? detach, it's going inside, right? yes. Was that? But, it, but the bed doesn't like detach, right? Like with a, I think with a typical truck, the bed can be an extendable or, or changeable piece. But with the Cybertruck, it's all one frame. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it drives like an SUV. I'll tell you that much. It certainly does not drive like a truck. Um, the Ford drives like a truck, but it's okay because it's really nice and comfortable. But the the I do not feel like I'm driving a truck when I drive the Cybertruck. Um, it literally feels like I'm driving a Model X. It's, I, I'm an old Model X owner, so I know what that feels like. It's, it's, it's big like a Model X. It's smooth, drives, floats down the road like a Model X with the air suspension. So that's kind of how it is. I don't even re remember I'm driving a truck until I have to actually carry something in the back. Can you? And here's can my you... take on the truck versus SUV co controversy. Who fucking cares? It looks <laughs> badass. It's a badass vehicle. It gives, it's a new fucking category. And by the way, I love, by the way, that you said that the Cybertruck is reaching across the aisle and how perfectly reflective of how, how polarized our politics are right now, that it takes a bulletproof truck to get across the aisle. <laughs> exactly, man. That's and, hilarious. You know, our best got a big smile. He knows, he, I know he loves his. And being in Texas, he probably can get to even a more polarizing uh, political side than we do out here in California. It is shocking, dude. Like, uh, my wife, uh, my wife, my brother-in-law had uh, called us and a friend of his got a cyber truck recently. And he said, he's been getting flicked off a lot. My experience, I, I hadn't seen that until recently. <laughs> I was at a red light and this couple was walking. I mean, they're younger. I don't know if they were a little woke or whatever, but this girl turned to me and just gave me the biggest F you. And I just sat there. I looked at my wife. I'm like, I did nothing. I'm just sitting here at a red light, minding my own business. So I know it, it is definitely a thing. It's a polarizing vehicle for sure. Yeah, it uh, in California, it's a little, it's a little nicer. Obviously, they're very EV friendly out here, which is great. But we still get the the hate. But it's it's. I mean, we're talking like 0.001 percent compared to everybody else, right? I'll get the it's ugly or f you whatever. <laughs> but that's so rare nowadays. Mostly everybody's giving me the thumbs up um, everywhere I go. And like I said, you even even when I get the haters, they're still staring at the truck. I had one guy walk up to me while we were taking pictures of it. He goes, this thing's trash. And he started taking pictures. I said, do you often <laughs> take pictures of trash? I mean, explain this to me. And he spent 20 that. minutes taking pictures and video. When I drove away, I said, hey, enjoy your trash pictures, brother. You yeah. know, I don't even that know is, what I was thinking, but that is hilarious. It's, it's amazing the, the engagement this truck brings. And obviously to us who are EV advocates, I love that engagement. I actually like talking to the haters more than the, than the people who love it because it get, makes me understand why they hate it. And I get a lot of times I bring it around, you know, the more I'm sitting here looking at it, the more I kind of like it. And I think that was everybody's um, impression. When we first saw it roll out, everyone thought, oh my God, Elon, what the hell is this? But by the end of the presentation, they had a ton of pre-orders. I know that was my 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 uh, view when I first saw it. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'll buy a Rivian. But by the end of the presentation, I already had two Cybertrucks ordered. I was right there with you, man. I remember looking around. Eli was around me, Matt, my wife. And then I was just like, I cannot be the only one that thinks this thing is hideous. And, you know, people joke, if Elon had a fan club, that I'd be president. So if if I think this way, that's why I was like, I'm like, am I the only one? Like, I was like shocked. It was like the first time that I thought Elon did it made a mistake. I didn't like it either. In fact, I took me six weeks to place a pre-order. Oh, wow. Yeah. It took that long for me to be like, all right, I see what they've done there. I'm a fan. Um, no, I, I, also, I, go ahead. I got, I got, you know, Tesla knows how to throw a, a party. You guys know this open bar. So I got trashed and put an order in and forgot. And woke up in a cold sweat the next day. The first thing I said to my wife was like, oh, my God, I forgot to put an order in on the cyber truck. And she's like, calm down. You did it, but you just forgot. Dude, I have this photo of you and Franz from the end of the night 
And man, you were like, you were, had been partying. It was clear. You were like hanging all over him. Franz loved it, man. He loves you, bro. Uh, and then Drew, Drew Baglino and his wife. I mean, we were, by the end of the night, everybody was having a good time, dude. We were all just drinking. Like, yeah, it was a really fun event for sure. Yeah, yeah it was design studio. Go ahead. Yeah, but talking about, you know, the lightning, it, to me, it was it's an amazing truck. It was my stopgap truck. So basically I ordered that, you know, we, we reserved in 2019. By 2022, the Cybertruck wasn't even planned yet as far as when it was going to be released. So I ended up getting the Lightning. Uh, and it's been amazing from, from day one. Um, it's literally, it's an F-150 with the, with the battery. That's kind of how I see it. Um, the things that I love about it is it's huge. The frunk is amazing. Um, it's two-body frunk, I always call it, right? It's so big. It was power up front. The bed's five and a half feet. It's still fairly large for, for a truck, obviously. And the inside is ridiculously big. It has two glove compartments. It's got a huge uh, armrest storage, all kinds of plugs inside the truck. And then you also have the power outside the truck in the back. So to me, it, it is it is your work truck, right? It is the truck that you would think people that would convert from ICE would go to this truck. I... Well, a few weeks ago, I was in Detroit visiting Sandy Monroe's uh, office where they did the Cybertruck event, and I heard him say something that, like, my jaw dropped and hit the ground. He walked by the Ford Lightning teardown, and he literally said, as far as a work truck goes, there's nothing that's second to this. This is by far the best work truck. And Sandy is, like, a massive Tesla fan, drives a Cyber Beast. I did not think that, like, he would be so... And there wasn't he wasn't wishy washy about it at all. He was like, "No, this is it. If you need a electric car for work, for con, like con, if you're a contractor in construction, he basically said that the, the, it's hands down the Ford Lightning." One of the things that he pointed out that uh, I don't know, Will, if you can speak to it, but he said in a, on a construction site when you're carrying like cement or like heavy bags, the way the front is kind of like lower and then it's got all this ample space. He said that the people that created the lightning just really thought about the, that worker more than, more than anything else. Yeah. And the, the, again, it's, again, it's huge. It's, it is the biggest trunk out there. Um, and it's got the power inside the front as well. Uh, but it also has, it's a 400 pound weight limit. So you could actually load some cement in there and it's going to take it. Yep. Right. Um, and again, because it's a load in versus a Rivian drop in uh, it, it's, it's really useful for that for that working stuff. Like I have my tools in my front because it's, it's lockable storage. It's something a pickup truck needs to have is lockable storage. So that makes it really nice for me to just kind of put in the front, get in the tools in and out easily, uh, and then lock it. Uh, and then the size. So the Cybertruck's got it. It's it's a smaller front, right? It you couldn't you probably wouldn't load bags of cement in there, but um, you can certainly put my tools or something else in there to make it easy. But the the Ford definitely wins on that front side. But you go back to the back of the truck and talk about the bed. So the Lightning has a fixed suspension, um, and that that's problematic in, in a lot of cases, at least for me. So you can even see this picture. You can see how much lower the uh, the Cybertruck is because it's in the entry mode right now. So yep. when you try and load cement into the back of, let's say, the Lightning, you've got a much higher um, space that you have to put into versus the Cybertruck would be much much lower lift. Um, I've actually come to see that a couple of times myself where – when I want to get into the back of the bed, uh, even though the lightning has a step up that you can pull out of the tailgate, it's still much easier to get into the cyber truck because it's so low. You can just almost step right into it if you're a tall guy. Um, so that, you know, I guess when you're, when you're talking about loading in and out, which is the winner, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the cyber truck wins on the back and maybe the lightning wins on the front. But the, the big thing about being the work truck is trying to lift something and drop it into the back of your bed. So the, the Cybertruck has those big sails, and that's that's problematic. Even being 6'4", like I am, I can't reach over that biggest sail and try to grab something out of the bed. So if something shifts from the back towards the front of the cab, or if you have a lot of stuff loaded and you need to take some of the front, the Lightning wins in that for sure. Um, I actually really use the Lightning for my work truck just because it is so capable as a work vehicle. Um, I've started integrating my Cybertruck into some of my meetings and some of my work, work but the Cybertruck gets so much attention it almost gets too much attention and it almost gets bad attention sometimes. So I don't want to drive it somewhere where one, I have to spend 20 minutes talking about it. Like I have to get to a meeting or two, I'm going to put it in an area where it may not be the best area. And I got to walk a very far distance from the truck and worry what's, what's going to happen when I come out because obviously you get so many people out here. It was bulletproof. And I'm just worried about someone testing that theory while I'm parked for work. 
Yeah, I've had. Oh my I've, god! I've had similar situations where I leave it in weird areas, and people ask me how much it is. I'm like, "Are you trying to steal it to sell it?" Like, I've had a couple instances. While you have this picture up, Eli, I'll make a PSA announcement. Uh, I've seen a lot of Cybertruck owners aren't aware of how to raise the suspension. So in this picture, uh, Will's Cybertruck is in entry mode. So if you want to, if you basically go to dynamics in your in your controls and and uh, hit off-road you have to press confirm and then i think that is the 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 extract mode so in dynamics you hit off-road and press confirm then you go back to controls and you put it in extract mode that is the tallest suspension that you can have in the cyber truck i believe from entry to extract it's almost 18 inches what sandy monroe was telling me so that comparison picture of the two cars if you go to extract mode that cyber truck is going to look like it could eat that lightning <laughs> i mean it's a huge difference yeah, it's, it's definitely much higher than the fixed uh, lightning suspension. Uh, and, and talking about suspension, one of the reasons why I, I started integrating into some of my work is that uh, in L.A., there's a lot of, of um, parking garages that, you know, six and a half feet to seven foot high on the height. And I have to drive my lightning, you know, like this. And is it going to hit? So it's really nice to be able to lower the Cybertruck down to like four, you know, five foot four, I think, is the lowest height you can go. And I don't have to worry about that at all. So it really makes it like a car. So that's another benefit the Cybertruck has over the Lightning as far as a work um, thing. But also for job sites, you know, being able to raise it up higher for some of the stuff you go to, it is another bonus for the Cybertruck. So it's kind of hard to say which is the best work vehicle. I think it's really the best work vehicle for you and what you need it, what you need it to do. Um, but they're really, they're really both great trucks. And the hate that, you know, the Ford guys give this, the Tesla guys and Tesla guys give the Ford is really not, not warranted here. I think they really need to come together and say, Hey, we both have really good trucks. Let's, let's see if we can get some more people to adopt from ice over to some of these EV trucks with Rivian, Silverado coming out, lightning and cyber truck. There's really no excuse um, outside of maybe towing long distances. There's really no excuse not to switch over. Well, can you, you speak? Well, sorry. One, one second, Eli. Um, Will, can you, uh, speaking of parking, speak to the dimensions between the F-150 Lightning and the Cybertruck, the height and or the, the width? Like the, is, I think Cybertruck is actually smaller, even though it looks like it's bigger than the F-150. Is that correct? It's almost a foot shorter than the Lightning. So the Cybertruck is smaller in dimensions. Um, I, I have to double check. I, someone, someone said this, and I, and I always thought the Lightning was wider too, but someone said the Cybertruck is wider. I, I actually think the Lightning's wider because there's more room inside. Um, it, it's, it, it's a very, it's just almost 20 feet long. It's a big truck. Um, this is not something that you're going to park in the, uh, compact parking spaces. You have to have a big spot for it. Um, and it, then one of the nice things because it's so big, it does have the 360 camera. That really is a, is a bonus for these big trucks. The Tesla cameras are, are pretty decent, but it would, would have been better with the 360, I think. Uh, but I found because it's so much smaller, as far as the, you know, with four wheel steering, you can get in and out of anywhere. And that really helps the Cybertruck um, be nimble to where it almost seems like it's much smaller than the Lightning. So you've and been one, of the things that, one of the things that the, the Lightning is doing, I'm sorry, the Cybertruck is doing is actually ruining my driving experience for the Lightning. Because I'm getting in the, in the Cybertruck and you know, I just want to do a turn. I just do this. Or this, this, this Lightning, I'm doing this and back and forth and back and <laughs> oh. forth. It's crazy. I mean, you could do a U-turn so tight in the Cybertruck and that Lightning, it's always a three to four point turn. Um, so it's kind of ruining that experience when I drive by Lightning When I because I'm going, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this, you know? Yeah, that muscle memory is for real. Um, when I drive my wife's uh, X-Plaid, I feel like I'm like, I, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely like messed up my driving skills as well, for sure. You get used to nice things very quickly. It's funny. I was talking to Zach and Jesse uh, just yesterday. Uh, they were out making a video testing the Cybertruck versus the Ford Lightning versus the Rivian R1T. And what Jesse shared with me was that driving the Cybertruck, even for the last few weeks, has now ruined it for him, even just driving his, I think, Model 3, Model Y. Like, because like, he's like, I don't like, I no longer have to turn my hands all the way around the wheel. So much so that like he's even considering, I think, not even getting a new performance model three like he was going to because he's having such a better time driving the Cybertruck. Like I haven't driven one yet, but apparently this drive by wire you guys are talking about is game changing. So I can't oh, wait to make time. It's highly addicting and it's it's something that you don't even think about. 
Like it just, you just start, you realize it when you're not driving it anymore. When you're driving something else, you realize how good that steer by wire is. And then with that four wheel steering, like I said, the truck is just ridiculously nimble. And, you know, I think it's the same turning race as a Model S or something they said. But to me, it even seems like it's a smaller turning race than a Model S. It is really tight uh, turning race, which is great. And then, you know, the, the other thing I, that's starting to happen is I'm getting, I'm, I quickly got used to the thumb uh, turn signals. And I get by lightning and I always press the button and it doesn't do anything. And I always have to make sure I'm clicking up the stock. I'm kind of used to not having the stock already. And where everyone complained about that, I, it is so quick to learn that. And then when you do it, it's like, oh, I love this, you know. Um, so it's really the driving experience between the two trucks is completely different. And it, it's I think I'm leaning more towards a cyber truck for the driving experience. Um, and I, I like the lightning for it for some of the, the, the bigger stuff I have to haul and some of the stuff I have to do where I don't have to worry about the um, engaging with so many people. When I get out of my truck, I just park the truck, go to my meeting. I have to stop and ask 20 questions or when I come back to my truck, same thing, answer 20 questions before I get in and leave, you know, because I'm never going to stop and just tell someone screw off. I'm always going to talk to them and engage, engage them with the uh, conversation. So. More so than any Tesla I've ever owned. And I've owned all of them. I, I joke that I've had the entire sexy lineup, right? Cybertruck is the one car where I'm just like, I don't try to explain to people. I just, I'm like, please drive it. Like you have to sit in the driver's seat and go drive it. So the steer by wire, um, the, you know, all four tires kind of turning and assisting, unless you sit down and drive it yourself, it's hard to explain. Eli, that's why you said you haven't driven a Cybertruck yet. You need to just fly out here to Austin. I'm going to pick you up at the airport, but you're going to sit in the driver's seat and drive it because that's the only way. Back in the early days, I mean, we're all OGs in the Tesla space. I used to, at one point, I led the referral program. And the way I was doing that is I was going to all these car shows with the, you know, Model S and in the early days, Model X, especially with the Falcon Wing doors. So I would kind of show off all these you know, people have their Ferraris and Lambos and exotics. But I could always draw a crowd, especially doing the Easter egg show. And then I would basically, you know, hand out a little Vista, those are the Vista card little business cards say, Hey, go to the Tesla store and tell them I sent you. That's actually how I was doing it. Tesla's tend to tend to sell themselves, but with a cyber truck, you really have to experience it. So I've had a ton of people test drive my vehicle and I'm telling people, please borrow it. I think that's all you got to do is sit behind the wheel of one to really understand. Well, guys, I think we're just out about out of time here today. Will, do you want to tell everyone where they can find you and give us your final thoughts? Sure. So all social media, it's F the pump. The only difference is Twitter is F the pump one. Uh, you know, I just, I just really think that we need to stop the, the, the brand haters and just really all come together as from the EV space. And that's kind of what I tell people. It's like, you know, you can, it's okay to be a Ford guy. It's okay to be a Tesla guy, but don't hate on the other guy just because of something different. Uh, and especially now that you're going to start seeing lightnings at Tesla superchargers, um, you know, embrace it em embrace that, that, that cross, pollination because it's just bringing money to Tesla. It's just bringing money to the supercharger thing. I, I, I always tell people when I'm parking, I say, Hey, this is, this station would have, would have went empty if it wasn't for me charging here. So um, embrace that. So, yeah, I, I just, I would love to love to see some of the, the brand pol political let's cross the aisle, baby. Yeah. Very soon. We're going to, every, every Tesla supercharger is going to have at least one Ford lightning or a Rivian or any of the other automakers who have all adopted the NACS standard. And I, I, look, look I, I get, I get the, like, you know, the, we're past the early days. It's not just Tesla anymore, but the fact that that is the case is because Tesla won. They succeeded. Yep. This was the mission the whole time. Accelerating the transportation of sustainable energy meant building up the infrastructure to make electric vehicles possible and then letting everybody else in on it so more people can have electric vehicles. Like this, this was it. This is what was inevitable. Totally. We should be cheering when an F 150 Lightning pulls up to a supercharger and not. I recently heard uh, somebody call the cops on a Rivian or, or an F 150 Lightning person. Yeah. Because they're like only because the signs do say Tesla's only. Tesla has to change your change it to EVs only or something like that. So, yeah. 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 Somebody called the police. I believe it was on a Rivian owner. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll include that link to that uh, article below and this hilarious meme uh, that I'm going to show right here. kind of documented what that looks like. Get out of here. 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 Get
Get out of here. Right. Help, police, 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 police. Do not be that Karen. Do not be that Karen with the supercharger. And if you're watching this and you're a Tesla owner and you see a Tesla owner harassing somebody in another electric vehicle for charging, if you feel courageous enough to do this, I would encourage you to do so. Step up in that situation and speak to that Tesla owner and tell them to get their ass back in fucking line and act like a human. Because exactly. we like the station to stay being a nice, comfortable place, not a battle royale. Maybe maybe we can lobby Tesla to just, just put F the pump only on the signs instead. <laughs> oh, I love that. that. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you all so much for being with us, and we look forward to having you back next time for more of the Tesla Geek Shit.